Hello ladies and gentlemen, thanks for the warm welcome back. The last tutorial request I received here was to demonstrate how I would create an analog clock application using core JavaScript and CSS. I uploaded an analog clock tutorial on YouTube for ActionScript developers about 10 years ago, and that can still be found on YouTube. One could also create an analog clock using core JavaScript on the HTML5 canvas element and I'll probably write an example of that when I get free time. Okay, using your favorite code editor, open up a new blank HTML file. And I want to mention real quick before we get started, the code editor that you use or prefer is completely unimportant. And I'm going to touch on these topics a little bit when I start doing live stream podcasts on my channel, which I want to start real soon because I want to address I want to address a lot of things, actually. There's, there's things that are grinding my gears, and I want to get it off my chest. I also want to talk about third-party frameworks. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is pop in the HTML that we're going to need, and it's so simple that I'm not going to write it out line by line. Here we have our style element, our CSS will go there. Here we have our script element, our JavaScript will go there. And here we have all of the HTML that will be in the body element and these script and style elements will go in the head tag of your document. Now this div with an ID of clock, that's going to contain the whole clock and we're going to actually apply the PNG image file that we're going to use for the clock face to this div with an ID of clock. And inside of that we have three child divs, each with their own individual ID so we can manipulate them individually. HH stands for hour hand, MH stands for minute hand, and SH stands for second hand. Now you guys are going to notice I'm just going to paste in some code for the CSS. But once we get to the JavaScript, we'll go ahead and code line by line and explain everything in depth. So here goes the CSS. And let me explain that really quick. This targets the div with an ID of clock. We put a position of relative, or you can use absolute if you want. Now this next style rule is targeting the clock and direct children with the ID of hour hand, ID of minute hand, and ID of second hand. All of those clock hands are going to get a position absolute. Transform origin is going to be bottom, so that way they rotate from their bottom around, and they won't rotate from their middle or top. Then the background is going to be the light blue color that I have. The border radius, I gave 7 pixels just to round off my clock hands a little bit. And opacity is going to be full 1. So these properties would affect all three of the hands on the clock. Then we're going to have three separate style rules. One for the hour hand, minute hand, and second hand independently. So these specific individual properties for each of these clock hands are going to be added to these that they already have applied. So these just get added to those. And actually right up here you could just put in div and it would work exactly the same. Now the reason why I made it uh, target all of the IDs specifically is because you might want to have more divs within your clock face. So you don't want these properties affecting any extra divs that you put in there. Maybe you want to put in AM PM div directly in the clock uh, right next to the hands somewhere. So that's why we're targeting directly by IDs here. But you could just put div there if you're not going to have anything extra in the clock because that would then target all direct child divs within the clock. All three of these. Okay, now when it comes to targeting the hour hand, the minute hand, and the second hand independently, you can give them any width that you want, any height that you want, and your top position and your left position will probably wind up being different than mine because you will probably have a different size clock than mine. Mine is 316 pixels, so there's specific top and left attributes that I have to set, specific numbers, to get those hands directly in the middle. Yours will probably be different numbers because your clock may be smaller, larger, and what have you. So these top and left attributes are how you position your clock hands to be directly in the center, and the bottom of those hands should be directly in the center. 
and I just eyeballed mine. Now the only thing different about the second hand is that I gave it a, an opacity that's different from the opacity one that all of them will have. And that's it for the HTML and CSS. Now we're going to work on the JavaScript. Now if we review the result of that in a browser, we'll see that we have three clock hands directly in the center with the bottom of them directly in the center. So if I was to go in and change where the hour hand is, let's give it another 10, 78, and another 10 here, 62, and then we refresh our browser window, you can see that it moved it 10 pixels down and 10 pixels to the right or offset left. If I put those numbers back to what they were, I get dead center again. And I'm just eyeballing it. Okay, now the CSS is pretty important, but not as important as the JavaScript in this application because JavaScript is going to be the meat and potatoes that really makes things happen. And that we're going to write out line by line and explain as we go. Okay, in the JavaScript I'm going to type in function adjust clock. That's going to be the name of the function that manipulates the clock hands according to what time it is. Now the next little bit of code we're going to need is going to be to activate or make that adjust clock function start firing off. So we're going to add an event listener to the window. That means when the document is all, when everything's loaded into the document, all of the elements and such, because we're going to use the load event. Then we can put comma function and you can set an anonymous function here and you can also use the arrow functions if you want. And I did a tutorial on the arrow functions you can use for anonymous functions and it reduces the code a little. Now here inside of the function we're going to bring that down a couple of lines and then indent. We're going to type set interval. And the set interval method is a way to give some timing to your applications. We're going to make it every one second. Make the adjust clock function fire off every 1000 milliseconds or one second. And you can also give this set interval a variable name if you ever want to clear that interval to stop the clock for some odd reason. But that's not functionality that most people would ever need when they're running an analog clock in their applications. But you can put a variable name equal to set interval method and then when you want to stop the clock you can run clear interval on that the clear interval method on that variable name. Now we're going to create some variables. We're going to do that above our adjust clock function. So we'll type in var d. That will represent the date object. H is going to represent our hours. M is going to represent the minutes. And S is going to represent the seconds. Then we're going to have h degrees for representing the rotation degrees that we're going to need to calculate for our hour hand. So now inside of this adjust clock function that's going to be running every one second, we're going to put d is equal to new date object. That way the variable that represents the date object will keep changing every one second to represent the actual time that second. Then the next thing we're going to do is set the variable for the hours, which will be the date object get hours method. And that will give you what the hours are for the date object or what the hour is. Then we're going to set the minutes to date object dot get minutes method. And that will give us what minute it is. Then the seconds we're going to set to date object dot get seconds. Now for the minutes and seconds, all we have to do is multiply those by six because the rotation, as we all know, is a 360 degree complete rotation. And the uh, minutes and seconds are only going to be up to 60. So you have to times them by 6 or multiply them by 6 to get it to coordinate into a 360 degree rotation. So the next thing we're going to work on is the hour degrees which that's going to be a little special calculation so that the hour hand moves throughout the hour as it should. So h degrees is going to be equal to hours times 30. Hours multiplied by 30 and then we're going to add to that minutes divided by 2. And we divide the minutes by 2 
That way the, uh, the hour hand will move through the hour the way it needs to as the time displays. And as some of you know, when you're doing math in programming, your multiplication and your division happens before any addition or subtraction. So multiplication and division occurs before any addition or subtraction. So this will be calculated, this will be calculated, and then they'll be added together. Now let me open up my calculator real quick, and I'll show you why I'm multiplying the hours by 30. Because if you take 12 full hours times 30, you get 360 full degrees. That's why you see H times 30 here. All right, now that that's out of the way, we can go ahead and start manipulating the rotation of our hour hand, minute hand, and second hand using CSS. So we'll put hour hand dot style dot transform is going to be equal to, and in between double quotes, we're going to put our rotate function. And we want that to be a certain degree, so we put DEG, and then we're going to add the, we can put a couple of double quotes to concatenate to that string and our plus signs need to go inside of the double quotes and then we can put H degrees for the hours degrees con calculation that we just did in the line above. So the rotation for the hour hand is going to be equal to the H degrees calculation plus the string of DEG which stands for degrees in your CSS. Now for the minute hand and the second hand it's going to be very similar, but you don't need as much calculation. Uh, so let's say mh.style.transform is equal to rotate. And then we're going to just put m multiplied by 6. Now since minutes go to a full 60, all we have to do is multiply those by 6 to achieve the uh, 360 degree rotation that we need to calculate for. And for the second hand, it's going to be the exact same thing because seconds to make a full minute takes 60. So we can rotate S multiplied by 6 for that one as well. Now for a static rotation, you would just put it directly in your CSS, your transform property, whatever, whatever rotation degrees that you want. But since we have to do it dynamically, we're setting the, uh, the style.transform down in our JavaScript to rotate those things dynamically every second. And the reason why you don't see me using document.getElementById and all that stuff is because in all modern browsers, when you have an element, for instance, this element of our hand, um, it automatically, the document automatically creates an object reference for anything, any element that you have with an ID in the document. So you really don't have to put document.getElementById anymore. Now I think that's it, and we should have a working application now. So let's go ahead and refresh our document. And there we go. It is now 7.08 p.m. And actually, I'll add something real quick in case any of you guys want to show a.m. or p.m. to your viewers on your clocks. But for the most part, the application is done. So what I'll do is where we're declaring variables at the top of our program, we'll just put AM PM as a variable name. And then right after we calculate the H degrees for the hours degrees, we'll pop in this if else condition statement. If hours variable is greater than or equal to 12, AM PM is going to be equal to PM. Else, AM PM is going to be equal to AM and then at the very bottom we can actually we can put a new div you can put a div inside of the clock if you want yeah I'll just put it inside the clock and right there div ID AM or we'll call that meridium and then down here in our program we can type in meridium dot inner HTML or inner text is equal to AM PM variable. Now let's go ahead and refresh our document. And there it says PM because it's now 713 PM. And with this, you could give it a style for your meridium element. 
you can give it a border to make it look like a little tiny box here on the clock face and your AM PM can display directly in the clock face like it would on a watch or a nice clock. And you can use CSS to position that just give it an absolute uh, positioning or relative positioning and put it anywhere you want in the clock face. All right, that pretty much does it. And if you guys want to show the day of the week, say it happens to be Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, you can actually put that in the clock too. And the previous tutorial I did right before this video showed how to get the, uh, the day of the week and even the month out of the date object and turn it into a label. Now it's important to note that this application could also be created on the HTML5 canvas element using no CSS at all and only JavaScript to make things look the way they look and to uh, rotate things appropriately. And I think I'm going to do a tutorial about that pretty soon. All right, guys, my name is Adam Corey. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And like I said, I'm going to try and start doing some live streaming on YouTube and I'll have the super chat box up. That way we can talk in real time or we can discuss things in real time. And I'd like to discuss a lot of things that grind my gears and things that don't grind my gears, all kind of stuff. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.